Hey everybody, Eric for present here. Today we have a lot to talk about, including a new Sony patent for ads, a AAA VR title not to miss, it's gonna be big, and new next-gen brain interfaces. But first, we need to start with the newest loss to the VR arcade scene, and the void has been closed, at least the Disney location in California. And this was first posted on Discord, showing these images of closing notices of a licensing breach and lease termination at the downtown Disney location, with a possible Disney Spring location closer coming soon. According to the licensing breach, the Void must stop using any Disney intellectual property, including Star Wars Secrets of the Empire and Ralph Breaks VR. It must also cease all use of Disney promotional material, trademarks, and confidential information. The Void, for those unfamiliar, is an immersive virtual reality destination which provides experiences on a large full room walking scale and it provides a VR experience that's just not duplicable at home, one of the last remaining ways VR arcades are surviving. I bring this topic up because unfortunately VR arcades may be a thing of the past, which to me is just extremely sad. VR arcades have always been on rocky foundations always having to combat general VR interest, as well as the constant lowering of VR entry costs, which will take potential customers away from retail VR locations. And of course, COVID-19 and the resulting hygiene issues of sharing VR headsets may very well have been that final nail in the coffin. Moving forward, it's just very sad to see VRKs having so many issues. I mean, they were already, like I said, on rocky foundations, but now they're having even more struggles. And that's just basically the last way that consumers could try VR before they buy it. I know many people who just tried it at a mall kiosk, something small, and that led them down the path to buying a headset. So it's sad news. I hope VR arcades, I know there's there's some content creators like Remarcus who has his own arcade, and I hope he's doing well, and I will support all the VR arcades I can, but let me know your thoughts. Moving on, I do want to cover a story about a new PSVR patent that I've been getting asked to talk about quite a bit and share my opinions. And of course, I'm talking about this patent where the company is working on technology to allow advertisements to be displayed in the headset. Published on June 25th, the first posted on Segment Next, it shows us what Sony may be intending to do with advertisements. Here you see the possible intention to basically have ads or banners in the peripherals of your view, and according to the patent, advertisements will be displayed according to your head position and line of sight. Look, I understand the very strong opinions on both sides when it comes to ads in VR. Some hold the word virtual heavily and want a full disconnect from the real world. Others see it as what makes sense when brought up in realized ways such as billboards, etc. If you want my opinion, personally, I find ad banners or ads in general very distracting and invasive when in VR, as being sold to unwillingly is not something that I really can get behind, but I understand that ads do actually help developers and are something that will probably, and we know, will inevitably come. However, the biggest thing with this patent is it's just a patent. Companies patent everything under the sun for no reason. I'm not even really sure how you patent advertisements. That's that's interesting. But it's probably just a patent that may lead to nothing. Nothing to get an uproar about, but I still think the conversation around ads and VR is only going to heat up the farther and farther we move along. It is most likely inevitable, but I hope it's done tastefully in a way that's a win-win for everybody. Also, we have a developing story, and it's a lot of speculation, so I do want to make that clear, but a new AAA VR title is definitely coming, and it's going to be a big thing and probably has the most name recognition next to Half-Life Alex. I'm, of course, referring to this post first spotted on Reddit, which links a link in post by Video Games Deluxe that reads as follows. Having finished the critically well-received LA Noir, the VR case files, we are now gearing up for a new project, a AAA open-world title in VR for Rockstar. 2020 marks our seventh year of working exclusively for Rockstar in Sydney, and we're excited to taking on this groundbreaking project. Now, Video Games Deluxe was the team that handled the well-received LA Noir game and has a history of great VR game development. I mean, it was one of the first VR titles doing vehicle movement well, it had hand-to-hand -hand combat, full-body IK, and it had a ton of VR-specific commands. It wasn't just a lazy or poor VR port, it was deliberate in its conception. Now, they did allure to this being a new project, but not a new game, and it's just my opinion that a brand new open world IP designed specifically for VR seems like a large and expensive goal. More than likely, most speculation is around an existing title, given official VR support with the frontrunners being Grand Theft Auto V 
or Red Dead Redemption 2. There is already, of course, a mod for Grand Theft Auto 5 in VR, but it's for those with a strong stomach and still leaves much to be desired for native VR support. Everything here is, of course, speculation. We're just making educated guesses, and I know some people think that it might be Grand Theft Auto 6 VR support, and while anything is possible, I think it's gonna come down to when this game launches a brand new open world IP or even working on Grand Theft Auto 6, that is a two to four year minimum cycle for development. And with it being open world, I would not hesitate to say five plus years. And I just don't see them making that announcement right now for a game like that. I think it's likely Grand Theft Auto 5 because Rockstar has the history of reusing that title as much as possible. I mean, if you haven't bought Grand Theft Auto 5 at least more than once on some platform, you are you really a gamer? I mean, I'm joking, but you get the point. Either way, let me know what you think this game might be. Do you want it to be Grand Theft Auto 5? Do you want it to be Red Dead Redemption 2? Or would you like a brand new IP for VR? Let me know your thoughts. And in my favorite story, let's all collectively set reminders on our calendars for the first online Neurotech gaming conference where there are rumors that there will be announcements or talks for next-gen brain interfaces and Valve will also be there. Now you can find a ton of info on this at Eventbrite for the free conference hosted on Saturday, July 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Sunday, July 19th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Day one, there will be speakers from Valve, Brain Attach, and Tesla Suit, which to me is the day not to miss. And day two features speakers from Neurable, Flying Mollusk, and Brink Bionics. In March of this year, Gabe Newell himself alluded to his interest in it, which makes sense for Valve, as they always seem to want to move things forward. He states, personally, the area I'm spending a lot of time on has been growing out of a bunch of research that occurred a while ago in brain-computer interfaces. He continues later on, in the brain-computer stuff, we're way closer to the matrix than people realize. It's going to have a huge impact on the kinds of experiences that we can create for people. Elon Musk and his Neuralink are probably the most publicly talked about version of this, and on a Joe Rogan podcast, Elon stated we may reach telepathic communication in the next 5-10 to 10 years. Is this likely? Honestly, I don't know. And that's perfectly okay. In fact, brain-computer interfaces and how they will impact gaming and be used is something I know little about but want to know more, and that's exactly what this online conference may help with and exactly what it is trying to promise. What would happen if you could connect your brain and body to a video game? I, of course, will follow up probably again in a video segment after watching this conference, but it is nonetheless something amazing, and although I may not be the earliest adopter of this for anything that is physically invasive, I'm just not willing to take that risk myself I am insanely interested in learning more about these. Through these brain interfaces, there are a lot of possibilities. I mean, you could have games understand your thoughts and emotions and adapt accordingly. You could have NPCs that are more lifelike and human-like than ever, uh, the opposite of a Skyrim NPC, and tactile feedback like feeling bullets or feeling surfaces, things like that could be possible without haptic suits. There are just a lot of possibilities. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Will you be tuning into that conference? Either way, I'm glad you have the information and the link will be down in the video description. But that is gonna be it for today's video. Please leave a like if you did enjoy it. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you never miss an upload in case the notifications do not go out. And as always, see you on the next one, Space Cowboys.